Hi everybody, welcome to this very special Bringing the Zoo to You. My name is Olivia, I'm an animal care specialist here at Wild Encounters. Joining here is Marissa, who's another animal care specialist here in this department. But most importantly, we have our very special guest here. We have a Porky pet. So we got this really special addition to our ambassador family. This is our Porky pet um, who was born on March 19th, so just a little over a month ago. Um, it is actually 35 days old today. So it was born on March 19th, and it was actually a really great surprise for us when we came into work on that, or in that morning. Uh, we believe that Lucia gave birth. Lucia is the mother of the porcupet, so Lucia is a prehensile-tailed porcupine, and she likely gave birth overnight um, from the 18th to the 19th because we came into work on the 19th, and we found this bundle of joy at the <laughs> zoo. So found it on the floor uh, with the mother nearby, um, and it was kind of a surprise for us just because we did put Lucia and her boyfriend, Eddie, we put them <laughs> together in September for them to breed together. So those two are two of our ambassador animals as well. So we put them together for them to breed with the hopes of Lucia becoming pregnant. And we did see some breeding behavior uh, immediately after we brought them together. But their gestation period is about 201 days to 203 days. So we about were about 201. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was a little specific there. So between 200 and 203 it. It. days. And that would have estimated to be uh, early April. So when this porcupine was found March 19th, that was definitely a surprise for us. So Lucia gave birth a little earlier. And I know you guys are hearing me say porcupine and you might be wondering what that means. So Porky Pet actually just means baby porcupine. So like I mentioned, this Porky Pet is a prehensile tailed porcupine. And we'll talk a little bit more about prehensile tailed porcupines in just a moment. But we'll talk about this special Porky Pet right now. And so when this Porky Pet was born on the 19th, what we did is we had keepers monitoring all morning long to see if there was a connection or a bond developing between the porcupine and the mother. And after a few hours of monitoring and observing, we noticed that there was not much maternal care uh, from Lucia. So we decided to contact management and vet services to decide what our next steps would be. And the decision was made to have the keepers step in and take care of this porcupine, just because we were concerned that it might be a really long time before Lucia does show interest in the porky pet. So we really wanted to make sure that this uh, baby just got enough fluids, enough uh, nutrition as soon as possible. So uh, we decided to step in and make sure that we can take care of it. So we immediately contacted our nutritionist who created a formula, which is just a combination of milk, water, and additional supplements. And that is what we created, or excuse me, what the nutritionist created so that uh, we could make sure that this uh, porky pet developed successfully and got the right nutrients and vitamins that it really needed. So we initially started feeding this porky pet about eight times a day. So we did want to mimic how often it would feed from the mother. And that is usually about every three hours two to three hours. So we did step in and we began bottle feeding it every uh, three hours. So it was about eight times a day, which did mean that we would have to take this porcupine home. And it has been really exciting for us to be able to take this little animal home and be able to bond with it, learn more about its little quirks and behaviors and just kind of see its personality kind of blossom um, while also just making sure that it's, you know, developing the the way that we want it to develop. So we had to take it home and we are still actually taking it home. <laughs> so for the first two to three weeks, we were feeding it about eight times a day. And then we slowly started to decrease the amount of times that we were feeding it. So in the beginning, we were feeding the porcupine about 17 to 20% of its body weight. 
for the whole day. And we're slowly decreasing that amount. I believe it's still around 17% right now, but eventually it'll continue to go down. So after two to three weeks, we decided to feed it seven times a day, and then it went down to five times a day. And actually today's the first time that it's down to four times a day. Ooh. So we're only feeding it right now um, a couple times in the morning and a couple times at night. So it will still have to get taken home for a few more weeks we're hoping and it's been just so exciting to see how well it has been doing it's been growing really well it gains weight every day or excuse me every night we do weigh it every night just or excuse me every morning just to make sure that it's still gaining the proper weight and we do base the amount of food that it gets based off of that weight. So we just make sure that it's continuing to grow. In the beginning, we did have some hiccups. In the beginning, the porky pet did not want to eat during the day. Sometimes it's still a little finicky in the mornings. Oh, just wanted to eat at night. Yeah, so they are <laughs> nocturnal animals, so they okay. are mostly active during uh, the night. So that's probably why this porky pet's not super active right now. Um, it also <laughs> just got a bottle recently, so it might be a little full as well. But uh, so we were having some trouble with it in the beginning. It didn't want to take down too much of the food. We were offering only three to four milliliters of formula each feed. And now we've figured things out. We've been doing really well. We, as in this porky pet, has been doing really well. <laughs> and now it's actually getting fed about 33 mils or milliliters oh, wow. of formula per feed. Uh, granted, it is getting fed less often, but it is still getting a lot of food. Mm -hmm. um, we recently have been introducing some solids. Um, in the wild, uh, it would probably continue to nurse for a few months, but it would be introduced to some bark or some leaves at about two weeks. So we started um, kind of around the same time introducing some solids and it, this porky pet has been pretty picky, and <laughs> that's no surprise. We have some picky animals here. I'm sure we have some picky kids at home, even picky adults at home as well. But um, we have been introducing some solids and certain things that we have introduced here. And I did bring some, hopefully, or excuse me, we brought some, but hopefully we will um, try and offer some to the porky pet and see if it will be interested. So one thing that this porky pet does really like is green beans. So we didn't have any today for us to feed, but we will offer some green beans. So, or excuse me, some carrot. <laughs> and like I said, it did just recently eat, so it could be that it, oh, um, excuse me. Um, it did just eat, so it might not be very hungry, and that's okay. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and... We'll continue to offer some other types of food. So if Marissa, you'd like to try and see if the porky pet will munch on this. Looks like it's a no-go on that one. <laughs> but so while she does potato. that, we'll talk a little bit. So now we're offering some sweet potato. But last night was the first night that the porky pet actually showed interest in another vegetable, which was carrot. Looks like Ooh. today's a no-go to, for the carrot. But that's like okay, today. yeah. <laughs> and that's okay, it could continue to change its mind. But the reason why we're introducing it to solids is because his pair, or excuse me, not his or hers, we actually don't know the sex yet, and we will talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But uh, the parents are eating solids. So they're not eating any milk or any uh, formula. They're actually eating a variety of biscuits and a variety of vegetables. So that's what we want this porky pet to transition into eating. So we have been offering a variety of veggies, and <laughs> hopefully it'll show a little more interest in the future. But like I said, if it doesn't, we'll try and change things up, maybe give it a variety of things for it to continue to uh, be exposed to the vegetables and biscuits that it may be interested or may want to have in the future. Seems like it's nap time. It does right seem now. like it's <laughs> nap time. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. But we'll continue to try and give it some, mm -hmm. um, you know, a chance to eat some vegetables. We can also offer it some brows. We did bring some mulberry brows here. Uh, so we'll try and offer that in just a moment as well. <laughs> but this animal, like I said, has not been sexed yet. So um, prehensile tailed porcupines have internal sex organs, which means that um, 
you can't really tell on the outside if it's a male or a female. Uh -huh. So uh, right now we still don't know the sex of the porky pet. So we have been saying porky pet, it, we have been saying them or he, she, um, but we're just kind of, Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> some interest <Perked> up there. <laughs> wow. So we <laughs> haven't figured out the sex yet. It actually can take up to about six months for the porcupet uh, to be sex. But what we're actually doing is we're participating in submitting some <laughs> quill samples Ooh. to the National Zoo. And so what we're going to do, or excuse me, what we have done is um, some of the quills that this porcupet has shed, we uh, collected and we'll submit those or we submitted those to to the National Zoo and they will take the follicles of the uh, quills and then huh. they will do some DNA analysis and hopefully we can sex the porcupine a little sooner than six months. Wow, that's really cool. So we're really excited to be a part of that and we're hoping that we get results within the next few weeks. So stay tuned for us <laughs> to find out what the sex is and then we'll also hopefully get a name by then too mm -hmm. instead of calling it porcupine all the porcupine. time. Porcupine. Yeah. <laughs> but if you notice, there are a ton of quills around this uh, animal and it helps stay protected, but... The porky pet was not born with hardened quills. Actually, the quills are all, or were all soft immediately when it was born. But after about 15 to 20 minutes, those quills continue to harden. Hmm. So it makes for a smooth transition for the mother, but then it'll harden so that it can stay protected because in the wild, they would just be vulnerable immediately to any predators. And we just, it just needs to stay protected so those quills will harden and as you see here there's some brown fur so it's kind of a redhead right now with a mix <laughs> of some black and white quills but the fur itself will actually just be under the quills so then those quills will just um, be its primary um, the outside that you'll see mm -hmm. so those that fur will still be there just underneath those quills but those quills will continue to grow and they are extremely sharp but the one thing I want to say is this thing has been a blessing I mean it's so exciting for us to be able to bond with it and for it to grow into being an ambassador keeper and we'll transition over to Marissa who will talk a little bit more about porky pets or excuse me porcupines and I'll hopefully try and get it to be interested in some food. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Olivia. Yeah, so this uh, particular species is definitely one of my favorites that I have the opportunity to work here um, at Brookfield Zoo. Um, so <laughs> the kind of main adaptation that they have, um, it's a pretty big one. It's included in their name. It's their prehensile tail. Um, so prehensile is basically just a really fancy word for a uh, limb or a tail that is used to grasp or to cling. Um, so <laughs> these animals are um, arboreal, um, so you can find them in Central and South America. Um, they mainly will be up in like the rainforest treetops. Um, so this particular adaptation is incredibly helpful for um, their sort of living. Oh, and you know, now that I'm up real close, I can see sure. that there aren't any real quills there at the, the tip. Very good observation, yes. So Thank the <laughs> there are various areas on the body that do lack some quills. Um, the tip of the tail is going to be one. Um, and the reason for this is because if there were quills there, it would make it a little bit more difficult to really grasp and get a hold on branches. Um, so the tip of the tail will remain bare and it'll give them that extra grip on the branches that they'll be hmm. living among. So the other kind of areas that they also lack some quills will be their feet, their hands, that big beautiful <laughs> nose, Aww. around the eyes, and somewhat around the ears as well. Oh my gosh. Um, there can also you, is... Can you, I'm sorry, I'm ahead. sorry. Can you point out the ears real quick? Oh. Yeah, they're kind of hidden they're here. kind of hard to see. On the side of the yeah. head. <laughs> Maybe just parting the quills yeah. a little bit there. Cool. People always want to know about the ears, so I figured I'd just <laughs> jump on that yeah. real fast. Yeah, they're definitely <laughs> hidden a little bit of a little bit there among the quills. Um, but the other kind of area that's going to lack some of those quills is going to be their belly. Ah. So their belly has some oh really soft fur here. Um, so without the quills there, it's a pretty vulnerable area. So the way that they'll be defending themselves mainly is. Um, Lifting up those quills, they can voluntarily um, lift them up as well as lay them flat against their body. 
Um, typically, they only cause them to go up if they feel threatened or uncomfortable in any way. Um, right now, the baby porky pet is pretty relaxed. You know, she, he or she is very familiar with us, so the quills are really nice and flat there. Um, but if they did feel threatened at all by um, some predators, um, which would be either um, large cats or birds of prey, they'll simply um, erect those quills um, and it makes them look up to two times as big as they really are. Wow. Um, so that alone is typically enough to deter any predators that might want to take a chance at these guys. Um, they'll also kind of lean forward and cover that belly area. Um, they want to make sure they're not leaving themselves vulnerable. Uh, so we do have a question about how big the porky pet was when it was born and how, how big it is now. I believe it was about 400 grams when it was born. Mm -hmm. um, I did not get to see what the weight was this morning. It just um, got over a one keg. Ooh. So today okay. was the first day it hit a little over a thousand grams. So it Growing probably fast. just gained about 600 grams. A milestone there. Yay! Yay. Yep. <laughs> Once they reach um, a adult weight, it's typically anywhere between as small as 4 pounds up to 11 pounds. Wow. Which they do kind of want to stay on the smaller side um, just because they are spending a lot of time up in the trees. Typically around the only time they would be coming down would be if um, the branches to a nearby tree that they're trying to get are um, inaccessible in some way. So they'll climb down the tree and then climb up the other tree. But they're going to spend most of their time up in the trees foraging. Amazing. I'm resting. <laughs> now it's starting to go around though. <laughs> um, is this uh, a sibling to Quilbert? Yes, um, they are a sibling to Quilbert. So they do share the same parents, Lucia and Eddie. All right. And how long would it, oh my God. <laughs> nice stretch towards the camera. I was looking at the questions nose and there was a boopable nose right in front of me. <laughs> um, how long will this be considered a porcupine? Do you know? I believe um, typically they wean at about 10 weeks, um, but they fully become independent at about 15 weeks. Okay. So I believe Aww. at about 15 weeks we'll have to stop calling them a porcupine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long will it take for all those quills to grow in? Um, I would say probably around the time that they become pretty independent. Okay. That seems about right, wouldn't it? Because they have to <laughs> take care of themselves. Absolutely. What are those really long whiskers for? So that's a really good question. Um, parts of their body, as well as around their nose and near their head, are going to be covered in those whiskers. So um, their really big nose <laughs> gives them a keen sense of smell. Um, because they are nocturnal, they have some pretty poor eyesight. So these whiskers on the side are going to kind of help them feel around uh, mm -hmm. where they're moving. Ah, okay. Similar to the whiskers on your cat. Would they cur curl up in a ball like a hedgehog? So they wouldn't curl up entirely like uh -huh. a hedgehog, um, but before I had mentioned about um, causing their quills to go up, mm -hmm. so they will kind of curl forward okay. and look slightly like a ball. And that's to protect their belly then too, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. I think you said that, but I was too busy being like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, okay. I'm sorry, I, know, I can't get over it, these guys, even though I see babies all the time, they're all so... It's Amazing. hard to look away. Yeah. They are just really adorable. So is all that brown fur still soft? Yes, it is. Okay. And does he have any teeth, any baby teeth? They do have um, some really nice big teeth. Um, so they are rodents. <laughs> <laughs> that you might not see. <laughs> yeah, it might be a it's little difficult enough. to see there. <laughs> oh. um, but they do have um, some nice, big, strong teeth. Um, once he kind of, he or she, I'm sorry, reaches an adult <laughs> Um, they will have kind of an orange hue to them. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because of the high amounts of iron that are in the teeth. Um, and this allows the teeth to be um, incredibly strong. Um, and then one really cool thing about their teeth is that they um, grow continuously throughout their life. Um, so he will look for, he or she, <laughs> will look for a <laughs> bunch of branches and um, bark and really hard food that they can um, nom on and try to keep those teeth from growing too large. And are so any a are, job. <laughs> <laughs> are any of these uh, prehensile tail prehensile tail porcupines um, 
on public display at the zoo? Yes, uh, you can actually go see Mom Lucia. She is over at Hamill Family Play Zoo. Um, Eddie is still kind of behind the scenes, so you won't be able to see Dad. Um, but you can definitely come out and visit uh, Mom Lucia. And then will this little porky pet, I almost said this little guy, sorry, <laughs> boy, it's so hard. <laughs> um, is it going to be part of the Animal Ambassador Program? They sure will be part of the Ambassador Program. We are very excited to add them to our team. Okay, I know I have a couple other questions here that I kind of scrolled past. Um, can you talk a little bit about their, while I'm, while I'm looking, about his little hands and feet? Sure. So they do have pretty long nails, um, and these are going to help aid them when they are climbing up in the trees. And like I mentioned before, they are um, lacking of quills. There's not really a whole necessity to have the quills there. Um, but they are definitely going to be utilizing those to keep their balance up in the branches. Once he's weaned off of the milk, what is his diet going to be like? His diet will be very similar to um, mom and dad's, Eddie and Lucia. Um, it's going to mainly consist of various biscuits, as well as um, some veggies and greens. Okay. Uh, how many babies can one porcupine have at a time? So they will typically just have the single one, mm -hmm. um, but up to about three days after they give birth, they can um, attempt to have another. Really? Yes. That fast. Oh my goodness. And his, is his nose really soft? It is oh my very, gosh. very soft. <laughs> it's so cute. Everybody loves the nose. Um, do they typically live alone? So um, they are fairly solitary. Um, it's not uncommon for them to kind of forage in pairs, however, um, and occasionally they will even sleep in groups. Um, but for the most part, they will be fairly solitary. And do they shed those quills fairly often? They do. So it's kind of like our hair um, in that they will shed them. Occasionally they'll kind of shake them loose. Um, they are very, very loosely attached to their bodies. Oh, okay. um, and the reason for this is so if they do happen to get in kind of a sticky situation with a predator, those quills, as soon as they make contact, they have a special barbed tip that um, kind of embeds into whatever it is that they're touching. Ah. So as soon as whatever it is that they're touching pulls away, all of those quills will kind of come off with them. Okay, so it doesn't hurt when they, when mm. they lose a quill then? No. Okay. Um... I think we pretty much got everybody's. Oh, here. Do they have any predators? We, so oh, you already they, talked about that a little bit. Yes. Yes. So they would. Um, it would be humans um, as well as um, birds of prey and um, large cats. All right. Well, it looks like it's getting pretty sleepy and wants to take a nap. <laughs> so let's go ahead and wrap sure. up. Sure. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special edition of Bringing the Zoo to You. Um, thank you so much for all of your support, and we hope that you'll tune in again.